if you're at dinner and someone wants to take a picture, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, having a quiet time with my, my family. Stop, right. just, just take the picture. Then go back to eating. Well, maybe when not you get during home, dinner. I have a problem with that. Not during, when I'm with the man's eating. Let him finish. The reason, and this is what someone said to me, because he caught me before I was getting ready to, you know, I looked down and he's like, wait, I'm probably never going to see you again. This is my only chance. It's No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. I'm Mike Botticella right over there, Gilbert Arenas. What's up? Today, Gil. <laughs> Thanks for saying what's up. What's up? <laughs> Today, Gil, we have, we flipped the script on. We have two guys from the East Coast, That's two right. white guys, two media guys. <laughs> oh my God. The tables have turned. We have Dane McMenamin here from ESPN. Mm -hmm. And for the people that don't know, you guys go way back, and we're gonna get into that for a second, but thanks for joining we us. We may today. be the two white guys who have spoken to you more than any other white guys in your life, possibly. Actually, that might be yeah. facts. That's, that's a fact. Might, that is, that's that is, a fact. That is, that is actually All fact. hours for sometimes a long <laughs> right. time. You that's gotta right. put the phone down and come back, he's still talking. <laughs> so so that's, that's the great part of this. This all comes back together. Um, they, this, for you guys, it all started, you were a pioneer, Gil. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, we know that with a blog. What, what, I, we wasn't first though, right? Well, no, so that's, so what happened was back in the 2005, 2006 season, mm -hmm. the NBA was using a platform called the blog, but it wasn't really a blog. They were, they chose like five, six players a year that they thought they would have team cooperation from the PR staff to get regular interviews and also players they wanted to promote. So mm -hmm. like back then, Chris came in on the Clippers, Marcus Camby on the Nuggets. Um, I think there were some others who came and went, but Gilbert, you know, was kind of selected by Zach Bolno of the Wizards mm -hmm. and also league, the league office thought he'd be someone good to promote. You came over from the Warriors to make some noise on the court, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, getting buckets. And uh, I was fresh with NBA.com. I was a year out of college. And it was like, oh, we got a young guy in Gilbert. You're young. Yeah, how about you do it? Um, and okay, so the NBA.com offices were in Chicago, New Jersey, and they said, How about you know, rather than do it over the phone, which was the scheduled plan, and you know, Zach Bolton would hold you hand over his razor, <laughs> yeah, phone, your razor phone, phone, you know, yeah. uh, it threw me on the Amtrak and went down to DC for the day, and we met in like the players' lounge mm -hmm. at, at uh, what the Verizon Center back then, and uh, you know, we were supposed to get 10 minutes, we got about 30 minutes, mm -hmm. and I don't know, it just kind of it kind of worked. We were two guys away talking hoops. Yeah, it was funny. It started off as what? Was it a diary? It's supposed to be like a diary, right? Yeah, it, it was, like, was like kind of an as told to type yeah, of thing, yeah. right? Um, and then, you know, this was it was the convergence of, you know, uh, so much content being put on the internet at the time. Mm -hmm. It was this is pre-Twitter, this is um, pre-Instagram. So it was kind of the time where the more than an athlete, more you than know, an athlete was it kicking was, in, was yep. kicking in with that before being labeled that by LeBron James. It was, you know, the player empowerment movement starting, mm -hmm. and uh, it kind of a couple things worked. Namely, what worked was your performance on the court. You were electric yeah. back then, um, you know, and then your ability to take us inside to all those <laughs> moments. So yeah, it was such a good idea. Also, though, I don't know if they knew what they were going to unleash. <laughs> No, it was what what made it popular was because you get the inside of that week of everything I was doing on the court, which our style gave them what was really going on yeah. versus interview interviews yeah. during the after the game on a loss or something where you know you're just getting my my response with no thought. Yeah. Right then, there, you know, a week goes by, and then those questions come. I get to really put some some time into them and make them funny, put the humor in it, cleans it up. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of cleanup, <laughs> dude. A lot of cleaning up. <laughs> and also, yeah, this is the NBA property. This is right. not just yeah, yeah. You know, so when it was like, man, NBA. you're funny, I was like, it's, 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 it's kind of not me. It's kind of not me. Someone has to clean that all up and yeah, yeah. 
Put a style on it too. And even guys like, you know, Dave, you know, this like Chris Kamen, we could say this respectfully. He's not as cool or as, he's a, you gotta break that down a little bit. That's as on the media side, I think that happens where, you know, like, uh, he's not gonna be a great interview. He's not gonna give me a good sound bite because they're just stiff personalities. So you want that personality too. And it also gave us like uh, really no structure or rules. You know, like even back then, even in the internet content culture, like, you know, you're keeping an article to 800 words, maybe a thousand words, depending on on the in-depth nature of it. Sometimes we do a blog post where we talk literally for two and a half hours, and we would run 2,500 words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it didn't matter because the audience came to appreciate. You know, one one week maybe it'd be you doing a top 10 list of mm-hmm. point guards from the the 80s or something like that, mm-hmm. whatever was on your mind. Yeah. And then, yeah, then literally the next week it could be a in-depth talk about, um, you know, what it means to be a point guard. I remember mm-hmm. that one you were very passionate about because <laughs> you you felt like no one really understood what the, the position required. Mm-hmm. And it's funny about looking back at that now is like <laughs> we were on the forefront of the three-point, the space this, mm-hmm. um, movement, and, and you were – one of the guys recognizing, like, hey, no disrespect to John Stockton, like, but like, he was the archetype for so many basketball fans for so long. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you have to recognize there's a shift happening here. Wait, you said no disrespect to No, no, no. I, I, no, no, he, no. See, I, I, that was me. See, that was, that was, see that's where the see, cleanup yeah. comes in from. Because yeah, right. I would say the real. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, then, right. and then he cleans it up. Right. right. It makes, yeah, it makes me look, it makes me look good. Bit. Right, right. So, uh, somebody's got to do it. It makes, it makes me not look so rude when I'm saying it. Because, it. because that's what it was. It was in... I, you know, I don't think anybody, you know, you you watch how I played and you you listen to the outlandish stuff, you know, I would say for attention. Sure. And no one understood the details of some of the things I was thinking about or talking about. And doing the research on point guards mm-hmm. and understanding that the Steve Nash or John Stockton, this mode didn't win championships. Right. You know, it was offset by, you know, someone they didn't understand. And that understanding was Magic Johnson. Right, right. You didn't understand that's a freak of nature. You know, a six, nine, yeah. you know, three, one, two, what, whatever he wanted to be, you didn't understand it. Right. Jump center in a final. Yeah, you, you know? just you just said, oh, he's making everyone better. He's a point guard, because that's what the point guards do. Right. And you labeled a, a, a player. <laughs> you you labeled an uh, actual player. You and that's what happens. You label like LeBron. You're you labeled a player. LeBron plays whatever LeBron wants to play. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, like like this year, they're like, oh yeah, he's a point guard this year. Well, he he's led his team in assists every year he's played. Yes. So technically he's been the point guard his whole career. Right, right. Like you're just giving him the label now. Right. You know, and when 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 you know when I was saying it, people didn't understand it. Right. You didn't understand, like, yo, know, I'm the new mode. I'm I'm what you want. I, uh, 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 I'm just a tool. I'm a, a, a weapon. <laughs> and for that to come from the NBA itself in, the, in their digital property, which is pretty cool because you would think an outlier media company would say, like, we want to get inside with players and, like, make a name for yeah. ourselves, make a splash. But the league actually did that, which tells me they know how to market. They want to promote well, their players. But it wasn't, it wasn't, I think it was one of those things where it was like a tester. Because if you look at the guys they had, right. it, it, it was five of us, four bland. It was like just, no, like it, it, it was it, like, it, a young buck. No, it was just four bland person. It was, I think Dunleavy was one of yeah, them. Dunleavy. It was just, it was four bland right. person. Cause I think they were testing it out. Right. But and, I think also it was, you took the interest in it, yeah. you know, because it, again, it was scheduled to be like, once every couple of weeks, mm-hmm. you know, Dave from your office in Secaucus, email the Wizards <laughs> PR guy. He'll find five minutes after practice to hand Gilbert a phone. Um, no, res- no disrespect to Zach because he did a great job. I liked working with him, but we kind of cut out the middleman. We mm-hmm. exchanged numbers, mm-hmm. and it was like, you know, we don't. We could do three a w- in a week. We could do it at yeah. midnight after a game. And what you know, traditionally, I think we'll get into that locker room environment, which is a whole other thing, yeah. post game and what have you. But what what outlets really want is access and exclusivity. So it's like, if I'm gonna get you, I'd much rather you 
at home, you know, in, in an environment where you're not thinking about basketball, you're sort of off the clock, and then you're going to be way more easier to deal with yeah. versus like right after a game, mm -hmm. I don't really want to talk to you. Right. <laughs> you know, like let's do this on a day that I'm, <laughs> I'm available. And guys are much more willing to, to participate. I mean, some, kind, some, some guys, guys are. I think you saw, um, you know, one, the influence of the blog. I remember there was like, there was some day where, I, I wish I remember what we talked about. Maybe it was something about you wanted to get back at the USA coaches for you not making the team, right? So I think we put that in the blog for the first time. Yeah. yeah. And, well, then, and then, you know, it goes up on the internet. And then sometimes you just don't, don't know where that's going to go, right? Yeah. And a couple hours later, it's one of the first topics on PTI. <laughs> yeah. And you recognize, like, I can program PTI. Yep. You know, I can change what people are watching on TV. So that you remember what what happened that blog, right? You remember that happened that conversation when I called you ranting. Yeah. I, ran, I ranted. Yeah. It was a fucking rant, and I was and I said <laughs> that the way he's coaching, they will not win gold. Yes. I remember I, I said that they yes. would not win gold yeah. the way he's coaching. He has the all the shooters on the bench, and 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 he has all the drivers and slashers on one team. It's not a combo, so they're all it's a clash. And I said, they're not going to win gold. I, and then I called you and said, you know what? Just, yeah. just take that out. I don't, I don't want those problems. Right. And then you hear me say, yo, they lost. <laughs> yeah, they lost to Greece. Yeah, they lost to Greece. But yeah. I told, I, I said, right. yo. And then our post went up. And it was like right before, like right before you was going to post. I yeah. said, just take that part right. out. Right. And you posted it and yeah. did that. Right. And then, right. and then, it, and then they lost. Yeah. It was it was one of those things yeah. where I was like, no, you're right. yeah, I don't I don't want those right. problems. Just take it out. I don't want people just. Was there? I mean, maybe that was it. But was there ever an entry where like, man, I don't know if we could put this one out or never did see the. Well, the one I think I've, I've I've shared this before, but the one that's like the classic story was so I you know I, I basically had my dream job. I'm covering the NBA, a couple years out of college, working with like one of the most exciting scorers in the game at the time, and you know Gilbert. I don't, I don't. I have a pretty irreverent sense of humor. Like Larry David's my idol, so like I, nothing's really gonna phase me. Uh, you know, so Gilbert's antics, I found the humor in it. But you know, you had teammate Andre Blotch, and he was one of the guys you liked to, you know, needle. And you know, whether that was taking a some sort of razor to cut the back of his uniform so his Change name his reads name. Andre Bitch, yeah, yeah. or taking out the sole of his shoe and defecating in the shoe. I he thought he defecated and you found you okay. picked up uh -huh. defecation. So uh -huh. put, yeah. picked up defecation. Yeah, that's <laughs> important detail. Yeah, Very that's important, important detail. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, I, I think this is you know, one of the. This is like a story you read about, like you know, the ABA in the seventies or something mm -hmm. like that. So I'm like, this is like this. This touch is like this is great behind the scenes stuff. And you know, you wanted to get it in there because I think you wanted to kind of like haze the rookie a little mm -hmm. bit more. You know, have Andre be known that he was a guy that <laughs> had to go through this but my bosses are looking at me like I have three heads like you're really you're really trying to die on this hill that you want to invest on NBA.com <laughs> yeah. right about a player in a shoe and, and like I had to check myself that you know your humor isn't for everybody yeah. <laughs> and what's so funny is and then that became a story that everyone wanted to write about right right it was just one of those things that oh we're gonna that's what happened let me be the first one to write about it I'm right. like mm. yeah. <laughs> right yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it came out our, it, came, yeah, it came out later, anyway, not yeah, on the blog. Yeah. yeah you right. stole our stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you stole Straight. our information. Right. Like that, you know, and, and I think I was consciously leaving out information for media just for the blog. It just I think I I, I think I sensed that sorry, the blog Michael, was sorry, helping Michael me. Lee. Sorry, Ivan yeah. Carter. <laughs> and I think I think I thought back then the blog was helping the exposure because everyone got to read it. Yeah. Versus just Washingtonians, right. you know, me right. doing an interview for, you know, Michael Lee and them, right. Mike Wise and Mike Wise, yeah, Dan Steinberg, all those guys, yeah. Dave, for you, after that, those days, that chapter, I mean, things kind of skyrocketed. Um, and, and I guess we can catch people up on your career. So yeah. came from Syracuse. Yep. It is, the, Gil, we're going to call it the, the Duke of media programs in college, the elite. It is the elite. If you want to work I mean, journalism. It's also Duke, yeah. a pretty elite I mean, basketball uh, program Syracuse, as well. Yeah. I mean, top 10 all-time wins. Wait, wait, Syracuse pushes out a lot of media? I mean, yeah, if you have I me, mean, you could probably run I mean, down. Are you serious? Bob, yeah, Cost, Bob Costas, uh, 
I mean, we Damn, I'm screwing Mike up. Mike Tirico. Yeah, Mike Tirico. Dick Stockton. Oh, okay. I didn't, I was, I was, okay. Dave, of course. Nick Friedel, Pete Thamel. We, we, got, we got some we got folks some, out some in the folks. field. Okay, yeah, okay. exactly. So it made sense. <laughs> he was a young guy, new on the scene. NBA scoops him up. Ian Eagle, Noah Eagle. Come on. You got to know this stuff. Like, I, you know, you would tell me about, like, you know, the, the most obscure fact about I know, right? <laughs> how stuff is manufactured in Tibet, you know, yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You, now that you have a blog, you can learn. A <laughs> now blog. I got to yeah, go, yeah, yeah. do yeah, my research exactly. in history. Right. He's, he's West Coast bias. So that's yeah, the only thing uh, that might not know. That's but, and I don't know about programs, Syracuse basketball program, all time. That's, that's an orange man uh, defending mean, the program on, a little too hard. I, I, how many 20 win seasons do we have? Hall of Fame coach, yeah, 2003. Yeah, I, I got a ring back home. <laughs> so you were, you were, yeah. So you were working for the team. Yeah, I was a manager the for the team. So I was like a you know bench player on my high school team. Um, you know, best part about college, you got all this free time, and so I was playing like all the time. And I got to know some of the guys on the team. Back then, I'm not like I have a pretty good shot, but I, I was never like a great basketball player or anything like that. But um, yeah, back then they only had two walk-ons on the team. Um, years later. Walk on's GPA counted for the team GPA. Uh -huh. So Mike Hopkins, our assistant coach, who's now the head coach of Washington, he's a LA guy too, uh, Matter Day High School. Uh, he he tells me, oh, you, if you went to school five years later, you would have been a walk on all four years. <laughs> You're killing me. That's the <laughs> worst thing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like the best thing and the worst <laughs> thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, but yeah, so like you know, I I I tried out for the team my freshman year, didn't make it. Um, the one of our assistant coaches invited me on to stay as a manager, and so. To me, it was the best thing. I'm in the gym every day, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, doing some practice drills with guys and you know, came in the same time as Akeem Warwick, who was a Philly kid. And so I got to see his progression. He ended up having an eight, nine year in, career in the NBA. My sophomore year, Carmelo comes in. We win the championship. Um, and it was cool because from an early age, I, the sports media thing was, was something, you know, I, I started writing for newspapers. I was 14. Um, so I, I knew I wanted to do that. That's why I went to Syracuse. But then I was able to see like the athlete perspective when the Syracuse post standard newspaper reporters came into the locker room and I'd see the interview and then I'd see the players talk because I, I was in the locker room the whole time. Mm -hmm. pre I was with the team, not with the media. So I'd see how the players would react to certain media members and their approach. And um, I think it wasn't like I was taking notes, but I think that kind of helped me just recognize like it, uh, you're kind of, if you're an athlete, especially a big time athlete who has attention on you from the time you're 14, like so many people are bringing so much stuff at you all the time. Mm -hmm. So you got to be really intentional about what you do in order to, to make an impact. And you know, some people do that by being bombastic or whatever. I just tried to be like, be as prepared as possible. Know what I'm talking about. Be confident enough to, if a player was to challenge my line of questioning or thought process, to not like shrink and not be able to accept a back and forth. Mm -hmm. And most of the guys I would have a back and forth with are the guys I had the best relationships with. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. end up, because you, you recognize like, okay, now we've broken past athlete and reporter, like you're a dude, I'm a dude. Let's have a conversation mm -hmm. versus let's have an interview. Mm -hmm. So. And that's where you said it's relationships. Yeah. Because especially when you're, well, so then, uh, when you got in with ESPN, yeah. you were covering traditional beat. Like yeah, that, that yeah. Kind of so yeah, it, which I, I hadn't really done. I, I was really fortunate enough to start at ESPN having had that kind of unconventional time at uh, NBA.com. NBA.com, I was writing features, and we did, the, we did the blog together. I did the rookie rankings. Um, but I wasn't doing the day-to-day -day practice grind. And, um, you know, ESPN hired me to be the Lakers beat writer, and I come into a team that, is Phil Jackson as a head coach. I literally had posters of him on my wall with the Chicago <laughs> Bulls team mm -hmm. thing. Kobe Bryant is a star player. He, Kobe went to the rival high school of my high school. So I saw Kobe play from the time I was in like seventh grade and he's mm -hmm. a, a junior in high school. So, and also like he was someone as I was trying to become a player, like that was, that's who I wanted to play yeah, like, yeah. you know? Um, so you have these figures that are like in your imagination growing up. And then you're dealing with them on a day-to-day -day basis. And you're trying to corroborate what you think they should be based on what you've seen from the media mm -hmm. to what they actually are. And, and sometimes being encouraged and surprised for the good from that, but also sometimes being like, man, like, 
yeah. kind of sucks. I wish I didn't know you were like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 and I'm yeah. not saying that on Phil or Kobe specifically, I'm just like any of these guys, you know, because I was like, one of the reasons Gilbert and I get along is like, I think we were both just as obsessed about the NBA growing mm -hmm. up. So, you know, when, when that comes to life, um, there's magic to it, but sometimes disappointment. But that, the life of a beat writer and that role as a player, it's a funny thing because these guys are around you all the time. It's a familiar thing. And there are times like you want to talk to them. There are times you want to just be left alone. What were you thinking when these guys come through? Like, how do you handle the media in that sense if they're the regular guys versus like the one day it's a big time, big production? Um, <clears throat> I remember, uh, so with me in high school, I was, I was shy. So, you know, um, and I was like, kind of, you know, shy when they was like, oh, we're going to do interviews. Yeah. I'm like, Wait, uh, I don't know. Right. Like, <laughs> coach, you do that. You do that. I just want to play. Right. And then, you know, once you got, once I got to Arizona, you know, and media's coming in. And I remember, I remember my first, it was like one of my first interviews and, you know, in the locker room. And it was like, uh, <laughs> where did you, what did you hear about? Like, what do you think about IUPUI? Right. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, my, um, Jason, Jason said they're from Indiana and they suck like shit. Like, so we should just beat the hell out of them. And that was my answer. And it was like, which is like gold to any yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, Right. And then that became like this thing. Right. And yeah, yeah, we ended up beating the shit out of them. But it was like, yeah, you know, you that's that's fuel for their team. You can't do that. Right. It's like fuel. If they suck, they suck. What do you gotta? Right. Like, how hard can a sorry team play? Is that's true. It's, you know? Okay, we don't supposed to beat them by fifty. We beat them by forty eight. Okay, <laughs> cool. You know, and and that was my you know. So then I just started watching, listening to other players, yeah. and then you know, you know, trying to figure out how it all worked. That was the cool part to me because like you know the NBA was like my dream world. So I'm starting to understand how everything fit together. And then to have a willing participant like Gilbert to like pull back the curtain and like, here's what it's really like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, here's what it's really like. But you, you have to understand too that how, that's how that dream world works, yeah. where you want a willing participant because yeah. you got to get something out of it too. Not right. that you're looking for a trade off, but like if I'm going to work with somebody, I'm going to work with him because he is not going to be up my ass. He's not going to press me. He's going to respect me. I think, I think what, what, what is missed sometimes is... we think we're above everyone else. In a sense is we're only here because of everyone else. Mm -hmm. So you have to respect the, the, the chain of command, you know? And, you know, I used to see people turn down autographs and I said, you know, the funny part about you turn down autograph is when it happened to you, how did you actually feel? Like you were hurt mm -hmm. to, to, to grow up, to do the same thing. Like, no, like I said, one day that, that kid you said no to, that might be your boss. <laughs> and you might be on your last leg looking for a handout, right. a job or something. And he's going to, the last thing he's going to remember is you told him, I'm busy, I'm with my family. Yep. You're with your family all the time. <laughs> you know, and I was like, you know, you got to be respectful because you don't know who everyone is and what they're going to turn up to be. Yep. So be nice to everyone. Hey, take, someone wants you to say happy birthday, happy birthday. Like, <laughs> like they're going to remember that for the rest yeah, of life. Right. You're not. Right. You know, and it's like, you you would rather have the, the better experience than the worst experience because you might go in for an interview and they're going to like, yeah, yeah, I met you one. Yeah, yeah, I tried to, it's back in 1976 at 3 p.m. <laughs> I tried to get an autograph from you and you told me, <laughs> Uh, you, know, right. so, you don't want you don't want that conversation. Yeah, right. <laughs> but the point is to understand how the whole machine works, mm -hmm. and, and I think young guys they're probably more equipped than in, they were back then. Now, no, you don't yeah, think I mean, so? They're you covered think? way younger, way earlier. We know we've talked to guys. Yeah, about that too. I, I I don't think like I wouldn't say a blanket statement. I, I think there are, and this really turned for me. I think this was the 2010 Lakers team. That, that won against Boston, I, I think it was like eight out of 14 guys had their own publicist. <laughs> and I was like, more than half of this team has their own publicist. And so it was around that time where I saw the shift where you recognize that players see the opportunity of media and not necessarily just an obligation. I think, you know, when I, when I, I have a player like that that I'm covering, usually you can find a common ground because there's mutual interest. Um, I think there are some guys though still 
that it, it's just seen as like a waste of my time and I could get back to doing one of many things I could do as a beautiful life as a young <laughs> athletic guy making millions of dollars and why do I need to do this? But again, I think Gilbert's point really resonates. If you treat everyone the right way, like you're living a better life anyway. Like, you know. <laughs> so I mean, like, 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 people should understand this. And we've been in quarantine, right? And you have video gamers and they spend their life playing video games. Yeah. And we've just watched during this whole time athletes, basketball players yeah. competing in the same world. Right. That's how much time they have That's right. <laughs> to themselves That's right. that they can play Call of Duty, Fortnite, these video games that much that they can actually be considered professionals yep. at it. That's how much time they have. So, so if you're at dinner and someone wants to take a picture, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, having a quiet time with my, my family. S stop. Right. Just, just take the picture. Can go back to eating. Well, maybe not when you get during home, dinner. I have a problem with that. Not during. When I'm with the man's eating, let him finish. The reason, get up. and this is what someone said to me, because he caught me before I was getting ready to. You know, I looked down, and he's like, oh, "Wait, I'm probably never going to see you again. This is my only chance. I will have waited until you got outside to do it. But you know, I don't know when you're going to get up, yeah, and you know, right. so I would just rather before your food come, mm -hmm. we can take the picture." and I can go on my way. And I had to think about what he was saying, like, never gonna be here again, Eat food's not here. You're right, what, what am I, yeah, you're right. right. Hey, you know, and it was one of those things, it's like, listen, you, like, if I seen Holly Berry, you know, you know, working out, I don't give a f how tired she looks. This is, I'm seeing her for the first time. Like, I, I'm never gonna get that chance again. I'm not gonna wait. Like, yeah, let me just wait till she takes four. But no, hey, Holly, how you doing? Big fan of yours. Hey, can I get a picture? Really want the number, but can I get a picture? And like, no, you, like, you know, you got to think about it. For the first, when they come up to dinner, they just spotted you. So when they watch on TV, they this and this, they got you on the wall. So it's one of those things you have to understand now. You know, and I don't think, you know, as athletes, we don't really understand that part of it that, hey, hold on. You know, I, they're at, look, they just left their wife to come over here <laughs> to take this picture. You know, they probably on their honeymoon. He's like, well, fuck you, hold on. Let me, <laughs> that's <not> him. <laughs> Let me get this picture. You know, so it's like, just take the five minutes out and you have the rest of your time to yeah. pretend you're family, man. It, well, well, two things. First of all, <laughs> if that's your approach to Holly, that's the, way too thirsty. <laughs> Uh, second of just all, just saying, you know, it's, you, you know, that's who you idolized growing up. I mean, when you finally see them, you're gonna. Yeah, you just want to be a little smoother. You, yeah. little older, but, you will hope. Yeah, you, you, should. you should. You would hope, but yeah, you will hope. All right. Well, we're gonna put you to work here. Dave. Okay. All it's right. That time. Sure. You're gonna ask questions. Do your job. Yeah. Do ask, your job. Ask it. <laughs> Do your job. Ask Agent Zero. And this is familiar territory yeah. for you, but I know right. you have some. No, yeah, I, got, I got a couple. I got a couple. All right, so um, we messaged after Kobe passed away. And it's obviously, like, he was so influential on, on your generation of players. But I think something you guys always had in common was, like, it was that maniacal work ethic, but also, like, the true love of the game. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to me... One, that, that his passing made you recognize that you want to give more back to basketball. So I want to know about that. But I also want to know, like, do you think there's something that you could still do with the game that would give you that ultimate peace that maybe you didn't get from the game because of the way your knee got hurt and the way your NBA career ended? Yeah, with Kobe, you know, it's, it's, it's just like, I remember it was... <laughs> Like where the beef, it was, it was like a little internal beef. You know, I'm like growing up, I had my little fro in high school. Yeah, that's right. I'm Kobe. I remember, you know, like my whole thing was Kobe growing up. Like, you know, he breaks his hand at Venice Beach. The next week I break my hand at Venice Beach. You know, he's working like, you know, so it's like uh, there's this big connection. Yeah. And I remember I'm in Golden State <laughs> and my boy hits me. It's like, yo, I just seen Kobe at Disneyland. And I told him and I told him, like, yo, well, my, my, my boy's gonna kick your ass when y'all play. 
And he was like, what's your boy name? And I told him, I told him, Gilbert Arenas. And he was like, dead in my face, he said, well, if he ever gets off the bench and kept walking. <laughs> <laughs> and my response, he was like, yo, so you gotta kill him. And my response was like, so he knows who I am? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he knows? Right. Yeah, he knows who I am, because he, obviously he knows I'm on the bench. Right. And, I, and I'm like, and then I remember like, um, Go, like hearing that he goes to the gym early, so I started going to the gym early. I used to call Luke, uh, Luke Walden. Yeah. Hey, what time does he get to the gym? I need to get there a little bit earlier. And I started doing that, and then him watching me watch him the whole time. Yeah. Like, and then going in there. So, you know, if, if he's at the gym at 3 o'clock, and then you have this nobody sitting in the gym at 3 o'clock. Right. Every single time. He's learning something. Now, is it processing? Well, we play, I scored 13. Next right. time we play, I scored 31. Next time I'm starting. Then, then he can see the pieces, watching the progression. Right. And the progression comes, I'm still there, yep. learning, watching. I do my training. And he can see, like, he loves this game because he's watching me, he's here. Right. No one else is here, he's here. and. I, I'm watching him getting better. Yeah. I'm not watching him work out. He's watching me work out, but I'm watching him. I'm looking at him getting better. Like, now he's in the All-Star game. Now he's an All-NBA player. Now, you know, so I knew at some point he knew that the clash was going to happen. That 60 point was coming yeah. because the numbers kept going up against him. 46. It, right. it was going. Right. So I knew at some point that 60 was going to come because right. I'm watching, studying, and I'm working just as hard. Yeah. You know, and that's how we built our confidence. Yeah. You know, so being retired and, you know, watching the greatest player in your era that you grew up yep. idolizing. You know, you know, you have your Jordan where that's your parents and you got a little gist of it. Sure, sure. And... You know, like when I fell in love with basketball and then it's, you know, Kobe and he's telling you, hey, you should be coaching. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Coach, huh? what? You know, and then, you know, you, you come to a game and, you know, you see a crowd over there and you're like, and what team is over there? They say, oh, uh, Kobe's uh, coaching girls basketball. Right. Huh? Hmm. Oh, all right, go over there. What's up? Oh, that's this, you know. Yeah. And then, you know, week after week, week after week, Kobe's coaching the team. And I'm like, well, if he's coaching the team, what makes me think I'm better than coaching? Sure. <laughs> than coaching? And I told him, I was like, I, don't, I don't really don't want to deal with these parents. Why would you have to? <laughs> that was his That's, answer. I was like, <laughs> why would you have yeah, to? Yeah, right. right? And, and then just the thought process and, 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 you know, so it's like, you know, his passing, I was like, if he thought I was good enough to be a coach, then I need to pursue it. Yeah. You know, I need to, because he's obviously, he's watched me my whole career. Mm -hmm. You know, all-star games, you know, all this, and we sit, talk to each other. Like, 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 I have funny things where I'll sign somewhere, and he's like, like, I'm here, he's here, and I'll sign, and he'll sign over my name. <laughs> he's like, yeah, dude, you're the only one that writes your real name and real autograph, and you know, I don't want an autograph that just got like KB on it. Like, who the hell is KB? And I, like, he writes full, like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, so he's right. writing, like, yeah. you know, so we did all that. It was, you know, and I got some special things that's hidden uh, that he's approved. Like right now, you know, I, I hit LeBron, and I said, you know, I don't know if it exists, um, but I would, I would like to intern for the Lakers, like intern coaching, like where I give you guys this, the brain, right. and how I see the game and try to add, but I get to learn how to like, like, like run practice, do this, break down film, right. because, you know, coaching, I said, as a player, we coached. We, we, we got to know everything, time, possession, mm -hmm. what the ref likes, what he doesn't like, who does this, yeah, what. Yeah. We got to know that, right. you know, um, who takes everything personal, so, you know, keep it quiet with him. Um, that's from here. But, you know, watching the game from here is different. 
Mm-hmm. You know, knowing time of possession and who to sub versus yeah, yeah. us looking over like, yo, get him out of there. You know, that's you know, you you have to make subs on yeah, yeah. you know, and and I want to learn that. And I was like, if that, you know, I said no pay is an internship, right. and you know, I want to learn and study. I think I will learn more information if I'm not being paid. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I can help you guys out with right. the information I know and get these guys on, you know, how to be routined and how to, you know, and heighten their, their play with, you know, with the game. And he's like, well, I'll talk to Palinka. You know, so I have that where, you know, I, I just think that, you know, like interning to, to get all that information. Sure. right. Um, because we have a game that's been given to us in a generation that never questioned any of it. Yep. And the way my brain worked, I have questions to say, why do you guys do this again? Because it doesn't make sense sure. to the overall picture. Like me, if I'm a coach, there's no morning shoot around because I did the study on it, the morning shoot around came in in the 50s and 60s because they were alcoholics yes. and you needed to wake their asses up. Right. So why are you doing that now? These guys are not alcoholics. Right. And most likely with the attention span of this generation, whatever information you give them at 10, 11 o'clock does not translate they, they to They need five it again o'clock. pregame, right. You know, so yeah. you just wait yeah. till five o'clock, let them sleep all whatever they do at five right. o'clock, give them the information, right. they can turn it on in real time. Right. You know, and, and it's just like little things, like why would you take your best player out at the three minute mark? Why? That's when you're in the penalty. Wouldn't that be when he's most dangerous? Like now you cannot touch yeah, yeah. LeBron James, Anthony Davis when they're, like you beat him up the first 10 minutes of the game, the first nine minutes, you cannot touch him. Why am I gonna put, put a cold player in during the penalty when that po- cold player is just trying to warm up? So he's not taking advantage of these last mm-hmm. few minutes. Yeah. So when you need more scoring, this guy just got in and he's still stretching and doing all this and he's waiting for the second period to start anyway before he takes his first couple of shots. Right. So I said you have this, these gaps of... Right, and it's all about the small detail. little advantages, yeah. right? That you can, you can pile up enough of them because all the players are talented, all the coaches are smart, they know, you know, they're talk- but what is that little thing you can Yeah, and that's like that, and that's an I'm and, and I watch over and over and I'm like, like, I get to ask the question, why do you sub at three? Yeah. Like who taught, like, it, because it's just, there's like right. little right. things that yeah. can add. Yeah, because um, you were like before, I mean, Chris Paul's known for it today, but you know, to get that 40 foot, five foot yeah. shot when they're trying to foul on the floor, but yeah. you were doing that back. Yeah, because I talked, I told, I, like my little things, I talked to the ref. Right, right. Hey ref, hey, they got a foul to give, he's gonna try to use it here, I'm shooting a three. Right. You know, I, if I tell the ref and I do it, it's, you know, so I'm getting full court three point shots, and and then actually it becomes a four point shot because the, the coach didn't like that, and now he wants to cuss him out. Give him a tack, <laughs> tack. Now I get four free throws <laughs> for the same thing. And then like even with Chris Paul, I used to tell Chris Paul that um, you're the, you're the e- you're the, you're the easiest to go against. And he's like, what do you mean? I said frustration. I get frustration fouls. Uh. I said you you get too many frustration fouls. He's like, what is the, what is a frustration foul? I said when someone does something to you and you want to talk to the ref, you waste a foul to talk to the ref. So that was your frustration foul. Now me, knowing you give up the frustration foul, I'm then after that going to go one for flat against you right. and either force you to play defense and try to get another foul or get an easy basket. I said, it's, it's like a combo. Wait till you get your yeah. frustration foul, then one for flat you. Right. And he was like, mm. <laughs> you know, and that's, but you know, that's the mind, that's the, that's how I broke down the game. All right, um, I didn't want to do this to you, but yeah. to get out on this, we're going to ask a tough question. Okay. All right, and I'll give you this caveat. Maybe they're not, it's not ego or they're not difficult, but who's the hardest interview? Maybe because they're more prepared or you got to come. That is f***ed up. Don't do, that. I, don't do it. Don't yeah, do, that's a setup. That's a setup. Because oh. if he says it and then the guy gets all pissed, you got to remember. I'm saying it's, it's prima donna. In a good way, they're, they're tough interviews prima because like, this guy knows some shit. That's what I'm Old saying. players that you don't have to deal with anymore. <laughs> that's the easy one. Older players that you don't have to deal with anymore. Who was the toughest? 
So I have a different way to answer this. So like, I think someone like Kobe, there were days where, you know, he would, he could see where my thought train was going and he would try to get yeah. me off the, the track, you know? But then we would end up going back and forth. But here's the thing, like you, you said that the pen's mighty, right? You don't want to fight with a writer. But in the age of social media, like a player can belittle a, a media member in a moment. And you guys can be fine, mm -hmm. but the Twitter world doesn't know that. Like all these, you know, people that, oh, he just sunned you. No, not really. Like I'm good. I know I'm good with the guy. Mm -hmm. but he may have won that little back and <laughs> forth. Back and forth. <laughs> um, but like, so I've, I've covered several guys like that. Um, I'll say this because he, you know, he's now with Philadelphia and um, he was a huge part of this last Lakers championship team. First time around in 2012, 2013, I did not like covering Dwight Howard. Just didn't. Off that was a injury. tough time. Off yeah. the back injury. Yeah. I mean, and, and I mean, yeah, he was going through a lot, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it was it was just always so difficult, and I didn't feel like when he was talking, he was being genuine, and I didn't think he even loved basketball that much. But he was going through a lot. This time around, and I told him this. We were in Chicago because that season, that one season before he left for Houston, early on in the year, Dwight took the stat sheet. It was after the game, they lost to the Bulls. It was a good Bulls team, but the Lakers were supposed to be like champions with that team. Mm -hmm. And he was going around the locker room, pointing to his shot total. It was like five or six shots. And like, to me, like, nothing says that you don't quite get it. If you're, you, should be care, you should be caring about whatever we can do as a team to win, you know? Not like point out my shot totals. And then we were in Chicago this year, and you know the Lakers actually had this crazy comeback against the Bulls, and Dwight couldn't have been happier. Gregarious playing music, um, kind of like keeping to himself a little bit, but he still had his guys on the team. And I told him like, it. I just want to tell you like I, I really have enjoyed covering this year. Like it's cool that you've come this far, um, and it, and maybe I've come this far. I even told him I said like I didn't. You know, this seven years ago. I was still figuring out how to do this job. You were probably figuring out stuff too. You know, you know the funny part about that? So I'm in Orlando with him. So all of it, LA was just, the whole thing was a rude awakening. You gotta remember, Orlando, Yeah. he's God. That's right. So there, he's God to Disney. It's Disneyland and, and Dwight. You know, there's no, Hollywood, there's yeah. no Kobe, there's no, so what ends up happening is, you know, it's everybody is team to white, the whole state of Florida. So he doesn't have the bad, so he doesn't, you know, the, so there's no sneak questions, there's no around, like mm -hmm. it's just, you know, so he gets just to be who he is, right. you know? And then when you come here, and then it's like, okay, yeah, it's Kobe, okay, cool. And I'm, 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 I'm probably behind Kobe, and then it's like, oh, nah, Steve Nash. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. You know them. Then uh, the, the, the coach, and then Powell. Then it's like you, you, and then he's coming off a back injury yeah. just after a year where he just kind of found his offensive. That's right. He just like I remember in that year in Orlando, he just found his offensive mojo. So to him, he thinks, "Hey, I'm 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 a, I'm a good option here. I'm a good option. I just dominated last year yeah. offense. You know. So with that, the back, all this media, he didn't." It was like, you know, it's like that pretty girl, that, 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 that pretty girl who's pretty there, and then when you come here and, and you're a five. <laughs> you know, you're not a 10, you're a 10 over there, you're yeah, five. Yeah, right. To him, a 10 LA five. <laughs> yeah, so he, you know, so, you know, so all of that was just a shell shock. You got yeah. Kobe talking down on you, you got this person mad at you, you got the crowd booing you, you got a back injury, you're playing only because that your body is still capable of just doing what you're doing, right, right, right. but, I don't want to be here. You know what I mean? It's just it becomes it becomes one of those where he's fighting against all of it. Right. And at that point, he's just ready to get out. I remember he's like, "Yo, why why here? <laughs> like I thought this was gonna be happy, but yeah. no one likes me." Like I remember him. And, like I can hear it. Like, "Yo, no one likes me here. Like, yeah. why are they booing me?" Like I was like, "Well, unfortunately, it's either boo you or boo Kobe." Yeah. <laughs> and I was he was like, "But, but what did I do?" I was like. You didn't do. You, you didn't do nothing. One, you shouldn't be playing. Right, right, right. 
I mean, that's, but, that's, that's, but, well, yeah, but that's was, you. Yeah, yeah. You're playing because you want to play. Because right. he had a torn Labrum that year. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he, he deserves credit for that. But it, it, it just wasn't. And here's the thing. Like, and that's what you learn doing my job. Like, you know, I probably should someday recognize. Because actually, I even saw, like, someone showed me what he got removed from his back. I mean, it was like yeah. a mass, like six inches long or something like that. And, you know, I should have one day just like, you know, just had a conversation, check in with them, you know? Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, when you're younger, you don't, you just, you're just there to ask a question. And I think it all started with a blog. That's right. Yeah. NBA.com. We didn't lock horns, right? Nah, I mean, no. we were, I was in a different role, you yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah. I was. But I wasn't, you know. I wasn't difficult. No, you, no you're not difficult. You, no, yeah, because you didn't have to deal with me after, I mean, during interviews. No. But I don't know. Changed my lifestyle around to your schedule. Yeah, you know, yeah, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. It's but, a different kind of difficult. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, Dave, you know, I'm, a, I'm at the strip club. Ah, this is the morning. Yeah. <laughs> my fault. It's his own set of challenges. I said, I said 10, but the strip club's on there. <laughs> and I'm going to say this. It's always worth it in the end. Yeah, for sure. Working with you is always worth it. In the end. <laughs> it's, it's refreshing, man. And you got to you gotta keep doing it because you got, you got a lot more to give to the game. Yeah, I'm trying to, as I said, I'm trying to, you know, talk to Tommy a lot. Just keep on the positive, keep working out, That's and right. let's get ready for the season. That's right. Know? But some, you know, players need, you know, players need to hear that sometimes versus that the outside noise of friends and stuff. Yeah. We all need guidance. Mm -hmm. We all need people in our corner. And That's Dave, right. we're glad that you're in our corner. Yeah, nice fellas. Also, you're probably the first New York Times bestselling author we've ever had on. So, there, that's the first two. I Appreciate that. And actually, the Return of the King for people that need I'll to make sure check both it of you guys out. Get Return it. of the King. You guys are both give both. <laughs> <laughs> check, check them out. Um, also, people can, we got to follow you this year, covering the Lakers yep. and the NBA, catch you on the jump, Sports Center, that's, NBA and ESPN. That's right, uh, outside the lines, outside uh, the lines. ESPN, the 710, right? Everywhere. Los Angeles. Everywhere. Just anywhere, anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. But uh, yeah, it's going to be. I was not really ready for the season to start this quick, but now that we're getting back into it, like, we got NBA hoops on Christmas Day. What's better? Wait, wait no, Christmas Day? Well, it's 22nd, 22nd. And then Christmas Day also. Yeah. Luca versus LeBron. Huh? Luca versus LeBron on Christmas in, in, Day. In Christmas Day, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't like the 22nd matchup. <laughs> Lakers Clippers? Yeah, it's, it's, it's dumb. It's dumb it's because I already first, know what's yeah. going to happen. You know, Lakers, I mean, opening Lakers is going to be trying to get everybody else involved. Clippers is going to win. Media is going to be like, oh, Clippers championship 2021. Like, come Wait, on. They do have Ty Lue on the sidelines now, though. So What? He don't got LeBron, so it doesn't even matter. He <laughs> that, <that's laughs> got LeBron. That's I don't true, care but, who's on the sidelines uh, over but, there. But Ty knows what he's doing. Yeah. For sure. Dave, <laughs> thanks Pleasure. for doing this. Thanks, man. Right. Great to see you. It all started back in 06, and it comes full circle because there's the only one, Gilbert Arenas. This is No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. Thank you, Dave McManaman, for coming on. Remember, you can catch us every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern on the Fubo Sports Network, and we'll see you next time.